Well, hey guys, playing with what's called a Slayer Exciter. Very simple circuit. Just has one transistor, a couple of components, and the coil. Now we'll take a look at the schematic momentarily. But as you can see, it turns this light on. And, well, it's hard. The camera doesn't pick it up very well, but I can pull this out a pretty good distance from the coil, and it stays on. It's still on. It's too bad I can't show it that well. There, it went off. You can see it's on, on, off. So, yeah, it's a, a pretty good distance from the coil, and it, you know, it stays on. Now this one does not make any arcs. I mean, I can touch it, and what happens is the oscillation shut down. But that's okay, because I don't want any corona or anything, because I want to make an AM transmitter. And if I had arcs and corona coming off the end, it would generate a lot of noise. So this thing has just what I need really if I bring this oscilloscope probe closer picks up the signal it's running at 13 something or 1.3 something megahertz and look at the uh, blue waveform there or the the blue graph that's the spectrum analyzer mode and look how flat that is. It's a very clean, you know, there's no harmonics or anything. So that's perfect for what we want. Plus being 1.3 megahertz, that's right in the AM band. Even if I take my radio here. The, the dead spot. There's a dead spot right there at 1.33 something megahertz. So perfect for what I want to do. Uh, there's a snicker. You might say, why is the waveform jumping around? Well, it's, the scope is picking up other noise because it's just hanging open here. But it, you know, there's really nothing on the spectrum analyzer mode. Let's see if I can turn that up a little bit. That's yeah, maxed out. Now there might be, there's a little bit of noise there, but yeah, it's very, very small. We're looking at, you know, a very low level of noise there. Another thing is, as I adjust the supply voltage it goes up and down so you know if I modulate that um, the supply voltage with a audio signal I should get a good AM transmitter working out of this well let's take a look at the schematic okay here's the schematic what we have is a very basic oscillator circuit here. So we have the 12 volt supply coming down through our primary coil, which is, I just have four turns here. And that goes into an NPN transistor. The transistor does seem to make a difference, like your common TIP3055 doesn't work very well. It, I was getting the lamp to glow but the transistor draws almost an amp from the supply and gets really hot. And this one I found out, let me see here, it's a, uh, it's a 2SC4020. I pulled it out of something, have no idea what it was. But it's a fast switching transistor and it works really well. So uh, yeah, 
find a uh, higher voltage fast switching transistor and it seems to work better. Well, the problem here is when voltage is applied, the transistor is off. You can't do anything. So what happens is if you put a resistor here, and I've seen different circuits, this varies widely. The circuit doesn't seem to be very finicky. I mean, you, it seems to work with a lot of different type of components, except for, you know, having a good transistor. But having some voltage put onto the base turns this transistor on. And what happens, you know, when you turn the transistor on, the, the uh, voltage across this, or the, uh, I should say, the magnetic field, you know, starts to build up and generates a voltage on this larger secondary, which this has several hundred turns of wire on it. And you notice one end of this is connected back to the base circuit here. And when that builds up, that turns the transistor back off, and this will turn it back on again. However, I've had circuits where I've taken this out and it still works. It actually still worked for some reason, even though I didn't have a bias to get it going. This diode here is just a fast switching small signal diode. The purpose of it I'm not clear. However, I do know that these transistors do not like to have a very high voltage, reverse voltage on their emitter to base junction, which could do damage. And having that across the, it's essentially across the emitter base, and it would conduct if any voltage higher than 0.7 volts or so. Normally over 5 volts, you can run into trouble with a, a um, bipolar type transistor. So how does it get its uh, frequency? Well, here is a virtual capacitor. It's called virtual capacitor because it's not really here. It's just the uh, capacitance around this coil to the air in other objects. So there's actually uh, just a few picofarads of capacitance in the air around this and you know other objects that are nearby. So that gives you a, um, a series circuit here with an inductor and capacitor which sets a frequency up. And it will oscillate at the resonant frequency, feeding that circuit back to the transistor and it just, you know, runs in that cycle. Okay, so making this a transmitter, all I have to do is find a way to modulate the power supply voltage with an, an audio signal. And that's pretty easy to do. I can use a simple Class A transistor driver. I can use an output of a audio amplifier, a single supply audio amplifier, because the, the output voltage would be biased at half the supply voltage. So if I use, say, 30 volts, I have about 15 volts to feed this, and then the audio signal would modulate around that 15 volt baseline and we'll have a, a transmitter. Okay, well, I'll go see if I can get that to work and come back. Well, here's the completed circuit. Actually, still need to test and see if it's going to work. Pretty much the same except for this Class A driver circuit. I used an emitter follower type configuration here using a TIP31 NPN transistor. It was in the drawer, I just grabbed it. You know, I needed a power transistor, TO220 type case, so I can put it on a heat sink, make sure it could handle the current, so that's what I ended up using. Then I wanted to look at the data sheet of this transistor and see the current gain, and once I know that, I took a guesstimate at the uh, biasing with the resistors here. 
I figured around 1k would do the trick and it worked so I didn't bother fine tuning it you know now we're going to work with the 30 volt supply and I wanted this point to be at 15 with no signal so it would be right in the middle of the operating range so as I put a signal on the input it would go higher increase the voltage when it goes lower decrease the uh, voltage at this point of course the emitter follower configuration is really a current amplifier it has no voltage gain but as you adjust the current through this circuit it's going to cause the voltage to rise and fall so it should work just fine and uh, what else bypassing very important this is an audio circuit right here I don't want any of that high frequency signal interfering with the circuit so I bypassed it with a capacitor across the collector emitter also important is to bypass the power supply I used my Walkman as a quick test and without that bypass it messed up its digital control it, it w wouldn't function right because of all the RF energy getting back into it but when I bypassed across the entire supply it took care of that plus having this transistor as well it didn't cause any more problems and that, that was just a quick test I really need a amplifier with more voltage swing on the output to drive this circuit so I can get higher modulation but outside that basic test I really haven't tested it yet so I don't know if it's going to work properly or not and before making this section of the video I had no idea if it was going to work but of course I saw you know the attributes of the circuit it seemed like it was gonna perform fine as a transmitter so okay let's take a look at the actual circuit and see if the thing really works well here it is this is the class A audio circuit which modulates the supply voltage or technically the supply current to the actual oscillator and this wire here comes over to the audio amplifier which is going to drive that transistor and I'll plug in my music player and fire this thing up and see if it works okay have everything ready to go here so I'll turn the radio on set that right there power supply and I got the amplifier plugged in and I'll press play here on the music player and it's working just fine
coming to show you the modulated carrier there. I'll slow that down. You can see it rippling with the audio signal on it. Well, there you go. Works pretty good. Special thanks to Cool Dude Clem for sending me the royalty free music. He has a channel of the same name where he plays around with uh, high voltage and Tesla circuits and things, driven with uh, transistors and vacuum tubes and such. You might want to check him out. But yeah, actually works pretty good and I'm pretty happy with that. And that's a wrap on this one, so thanks for watching.